Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining our webinar today, Compliance Countdown, Lockdown, Your 2017 ACA Reporting. My name is Amanda, and I'll be your moderator today. I'm here with Emily Black and Gina Ortiz, here from Benefit Express, to tell you a little bit about our compliance solution, how we can help you out, um, especially given the recent um, end of the push for the Graham-Cassidy bill. It's really time to kind of buckle down and prepare to be compliant in 20, for our 2017 reporting. I know that there's a lot of information in this PowerPoint, so don't worry if you miss anything. We are recording right now, and we'll be sending the slides to everybody after the webinar concludes. Um, because there is so much information, we do have quite a few attendees. I'm going to be keeping everybody on mute. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the question box below, and I will read them out loud to our presenters um, after they've presented. If you have any specific pricing questions, um, you can either contact our sales team or, again, leave your question below and we'll have a sales representative reach out to you after the webinar. For now, I'm going to turn it over to Emily. Hi, everyone. Like Amanda mentioned, my name is Emily Black and I've been at Benefit Express for the last nine and a half years and the last three years as a member of the ACA team. So today we're going to focus on the forms and filing. And really, when we look back at the last year, there's been a lot of prepared legislation, votes, and been kind of a roller coaster of a year. But where we are right now and where we've ended up is exactly where we were last year. So everyone does have you know, business as usual in terms of the filing requirements for ACA this year. At Benefit Express, for us to prepare forms and filings for an employer, there's really two different buckets that those individuals could fall into. First, if we already have your enrollment data for employees on one of the Benefit Express platforms. Or second, if we don't, if you're just um, new to Benefit Express or someone that we, we don't have your information and data in our system yet. So what you can expect from the Benefit Express product is by providing us with the data, or if it's data we already have, we will go ahead and generate all the forms through our ACA Manager tool. And that includes all the code calculations, especially for those dreaded lines 14, 15, and 16, which can be quite the challenge. From there, our team will do the testing and verification, and your team can be involved as little or as much as you'd like. We have some clients that prefer to review quite a few statements and validate the information, and others that take more of a hands-off approach and just look at a few key um, test lives that they'd like. From there, we do offer in-house fulfillment for any employee 1095C or 1095B forms that you need delivered, as well as we can electronically deliver statements. Now, once the employee forms have all been distributed, our next step is to generate the XML files, and that does include the employer 1094C as well as the employee forms. Um, generally, it's the 1095C. And then last step is to e-file with the IRS and provide that XML file on your behalf. From there, you can expect the team will provide you with the receipt ID and all status confirmations along the way. If you are an employer that's not currently providing data on one of the Benefit Express platforms, we can get all the necessary information to create employee statements through three easy demographic or three easy files. The first being employer information through about 20 questions on your employer and ALE information, we'll be able to get enough data to generate the form. The next is the employee file, which contains employee demographic as well as coverage information. And then thirdly is the dependent file, again with demographic and coverage information. And the dependent file would only need to be provided for dependents covered in the self-insured medical plan. So through, through those three easy file layouts, we would be able to get all the data necessary to generate those forms. Now when we start talking about the timing, so this year the IRS has not released any extensions yet. So the employee notification deadline is January 31st, 2018 and then it is for the reporting of the 2017 calendar year. Directly following that, the XML files for submission are due to the IRS by April 2nd this year. Now, generally the deadline is March 31st, but for this year that happens to fall on a Saturday. So we get a couple extra days and um, April 2nd is the true date for those files to be due. Now, in order to achieve those dates, we do need 
final production data in Benefit Express hands no later than end of day on January 5th, 2018. And that's so we have adequate time to run through the verification, testing, file, final updates, as well as prepare any information for the fulfillment processing. So to back into that date even further, we're looking for all the initial test files to be provided the recommended date of October 13th. That gives our group plenty of time to test that, test the files, verify them, go back with any questions, and then make sure that there's adequate time for you to review the statements as well. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our Director of Product Strategy, Gina Ortiz, to review the ACA Manager product. Awesome. Thanks so much, Emily. Hi, everyone. Thanks again. Just to kind of echo what Emily said, we certainly appreciate you all joining us today. Um, and I wanted to take some time here just to share with you a little bit about um, our ECA Manager tool. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, this just really gives you an overview of our product. Uh, we offer a very complex array of options and opportunities. And kind of as Emily said, as she kind of talked through the standalone product um, and just mentioning some of the services available, uh, in company with those services, we offer uh, the use of the product. And within using the product, you have the opportunity here to uh, enjoy some of these features. So really securing your ALE status, for most of us we already know what that is and let me uh, go ahead and uh, explain ALE. That of course stands for Applicable Large Employer Groups. You have an opportunity to manage your affordability, uh, whether that be rate of pay uh, or the FPL if that's what you're using for the federal poverty limit. You then have an opportunity to send out the model exchange notices, which is essentially a notification to employees, letting them know, hey, you're eligible for benefits. Here is the information for the marketplace. And then from there, of course, as Emily talked through the e-filing process, we then offer the 1094 for the employer and, of course, the 1095 uh, forms for all of your employees. And all of those are generated, all the data is populated through the system based on all the information you have provided us for the year. And just moving ahead here, again, Going through, as you're preparing those forms, you're going to want to make sure that you have those full-time employees uh, who receive those 1095 forms. You also have the ability to, as you're going through, for those of you who are not sure of the strategy in terms of you know, how you want to um, allocate your pay or play strategy, we do have a calculator, calculator option in the system that allows you to kind of go through various scenarios calculate them out and make a determination on how you want to offer benefits to your group of employees. From there, we also have a custom measurement periods. Of course, that includes the administrative and stability periods. Uh, so really allowing you to create uh, periods of measure based on uh, subgroups of employees, benefit groups, and, and so forth. From there, we also have uh, analytics. So of all the data that you're putting into the system, you then have a dashboard that really displays all of that information on the dashboard for you. So you've got uh, your uh, various calculations of when, what employees are full-time or part-time within, within a given month, what employ employees are compliant, uh, and so forth. And then finally, of course, you have an opportunity to e-file. And with the e-file option, we do offer a variety of reporting so that, as Emily mentioned, you can be just as involved as you'd like or be just as hands-off as you like. It's really up to you. Uh, for those of you who do opt to be more involved, we do have a variety of reporting options that accompany the e-file process that really allow you to audit the data uh, provided on all of the forms. And so these next couple of slides that we're going to show you is just really kind of a, a overview um, or just an insight, if you will, into some of the information that we offer in the system. And certainly your sales uh, person can either follow up with you, we can follow up with you and get you connected to someone in sales if you have not already 
seen a live demonstration of a BACA manager tool. So this offers just a background as you're going through uploading all of your hours into the system or if that's something we are doing for you, this really gives you an opportunity to see for the measurement period how many hours worked uh, for each employee under each uh, given month. So for this example, you've got December through November, that was that particular measurement period, and then you've got a list of employees and the hours uh, that they worked for each of those months. And moving forward, uh, the next slide gives you the overview of really, uh, we felt this was very important. This just, again, going, circling back into the e-filing piece, we felt it was important for you all who are going to be using that, understand really how we uh, expect the acknowledgement to fall through on the employer side. So again, uh, depending on how you're auditing the data in terms of how you would like to be involved, very involved or, or not so much, we do ask that you go ahead and uh, do an acknowledgement to say, yes, all the data I've submitted is accurate and true. I'm comfortable with this information. Um, from there, you do have an opportunity to see the 1094 PDF, as well as all the information that's been populated in that PDF based on everything that you've uh, provided to us uh, to upload, or if you've implemented it yourself, you will be able to see all of the information uh, on the 1094 that you've implemented as well. And then, um, so this is essentially how you acknowledge uh, your acceptance of the 1094, and then from there, we initiate the e-file process on your behalf. And that really wraps up the product uh, demonstration of our webinar. Um, and I think really just the next steps are, uh, are there any questions? I think I will go ahead and hand it back over to Amanda to kind of wrap this up for us. All right, Gina and Emily, thank you guys both so much for your, your insight and your expertise on both the ACA process and on our product. Really appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, I see a couple of raised hands. We are going to keep this webinar on mute, so if you have any questions, please just type them. There's a question box below. Um, and I'd be happy to read them aloud to Gina and Emily. Um, other than that, if you have any more um, pricing-related questions or uh, if you're just ready to kind of um, work with us on your ACA compliance solution, please reach out to our sales team. Their email is right on the screen. It's sales at mybenefitexpress.com. Um, we do have a limited number of seats for ACA left this year, so now is the time. <laughs> Um, other than that, thank you all for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs>